Backing up important files is not something that everybody does, but it's probably something we should all consider. Anything can happen. Computers crash. Other kinds of disasters can happen. And if you lose your important files that are very crucial to a business, for example, or perhaps their memories and photos, you'll want to have them located somewhere else, such as a CD or a DVD. So we're going to talk about burning files to a disk. Now, I've already inserted a blank DVD into my drive. And you can see what happens here. Autoplay opens up. You'll also see that this happens to be a DVD read-write drive. So the drive I'm using allows me to read DVDs, but also burn DVDs. Now, down below, I've got some options. I can burn files to this disk, which is just copying files. Or I can actually burn a DVD video disk, which means I could pop it into a DVD player. Well, I'm not going to do either of these. So I'm going to close up this window. And now I've got my blank DVD in the drive, and I'm in Windows Explorer. Now, you'll notice when you're in Windows Explorer on the toolbar, you'll see a Burn button. So we can select files or whole folders, multiple folders, if you will, to be burned or backed up to a drive, such as a DVD or a CD drive. I'm going to select the exercise files. And now I'm going to find Burn. Here it is now over here on the toolbar. And when I click Burn, you're going to see the disk title is going to be created for me using the current date. But you can type whatever you want in there. I'm going to type Backup Exercise Files. That's about as far as I can do. So I might want to shorten this. X Files. There we go. And I've got two options down below. I can burn them like files to a USB flash drive, which means I'll be able to copy them off the drive. I'd be able to edit and delete the files on the disk before I actually close up a session. Or if I prefer, I can choose to burn files in groups. And individual files won't be able to be edited or removed after burning, but I'll be able to put them into a CD or a DVD player. Well, in this case, I'm just backing up the files. I want to have them in another location just in case something happens to my hard drive. So I'm going to choose like a USB flash drive. And when I click Next, it's going to format my blank disk. In this case, it's a DVD. So you can see it's preparing to format it on my DVD read-write drive. Now, the disk I placed in there is a DVD plus R disk. It's got 4.7 gigabytes of space on it. It's not a read-write disk, though, even though it's in a read-write drive. If you're using a read-write disk, whether it's a CD or a DVD, you'll be able to copy files over, but you'll also be able to go in there and take out files. You'll be able to delete, add additional files. So you can always go back, clear space if you needed to, and continue to use that DVD or CD on a regular basis, only if it's a read-write disk. With a read-only disk like this, I'll be able to work with the files. I can move them around and delete them and stuff, but when I close the session, I'm done. So now you can see autoplay shows up again here for backing up the files. I can open the folder to view the files. Now, there aren't anything in there. There's nothing to be found. So when I choose this, I can drag files to this folder and add them to the disk. Notice at the top, that's what I'm looking at, the contents of my new disk called Backup X Files. Now, an easier way to burn them instead of dragging them is just to go select them. So I'm going to go back to Desktop, click Exercise Files. And if that's all I want, I don't have to select anything else. But I could if I wanted to. For example, if I wanted to hold down my Control key and also copy this file here, you can see they're both selected. And when I click Burn, it's actually going to start copying them to my drive. So there's the Exercise Files. You can see the number of items in total and the amount of space that's going to be used up for this. And eventually, I'm going to see my exercise files and my Excel file copied to my DVD. Now, I haven't closed the session. I haven't ejected the disk at this point. So if I want to manipulate these, maybe I don't want that. I can select it, press Delete on the keyboard, and confirm by clicking Yes that I want to remove it from the disk. I can go inside the exercise files. There's the various chapters. If I go to chapter 3, for example, I could delete an entire folder if I didn't want it included. Go to 0301, press Delete, and confirm that. So you can see we can manipulate these before we actually eject the disk. So we can get exactly what we need on the disk before we close it up. Now, at the top, you'll notice Eject. This will close the session as well. Closes the current session. 
and then I can take it to another computer and copy those files if I needed to or just store it away until that event happens where I need to go back and get these files. When I click eject though, you're going to see it's actually going to close the session. Please wait while this session is closed so the disk can be used on other computers. So it's going to be busy closing it up and then eventually it's going to eject the disk from my drive and I can take it to another computer. So burning your files using the burn button on the toolbar is a very simple process. It's choosing the right disk and having the right drive. If you don't have a read-write drive, you won't be able to use it to burn files. If you do have a read-write drive and it's a DVD, you'll be able to use CDs and DVDs in there. And if you've got disks that also have the RW on the end, standing for read-write, then you're going to be able to take that disk and bring it back and forth and remove files, create space, edit those files, copy them, and so on.